Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I'm gonna be setting up this reef tank. As you can see, it's already partially set up. The sump and everything's not running yet, so I haven't got the full filtration thing happening. I've just filled it up with a bunch of fresh seawater. Um, this is natural seawater. I usually do mix my own, but in saying that, this is just gonna be an easy thing to do the transfer with. I've just got a heater in there, a little bit of live rock that I've just had curing in my sump at home. And then I've also got a little wave maker just to kind of oxygenate the water as well. I'm about to head home, grab all my fish, grab all my corals, grab all my other equipment and stuff like that, break down that tank and uh, bring all the gear up and transfer it into this one. So this tank's a Red Sea 250. It's a nice little secondhand unit. Managed to score this through work and it was a bit of a deal that I couldn't refuse. The lighting on it is a couple of Hydra 32s. They're the new Bluetooth models. And uh, underneath, we've just got the normal sump, stock sump. I haven't really gone through and plumbed a hell of a lot of it yet, um, but I will be running hosing out to a chiller over on this side and then I'm going to have like a little bit of a power unit cabinet over here with a bunch of grid connect power boards and things so I can control it from wherever I am. But yeah, I think this is going to really make our lounge room pop. Where you can see that, you know, moving in is kind of coming along now. We've got a few bits and pieces in here and it's going to be nice to be able to sit down, you know, have dinner, have a coffee, do whatever and be able to enjoy the reef tank. Well, it's finally time to break this down. Been kind of dreading this day because it's been one of the big it's going to be one of the biggest tasks that i have to do as far as this move's concerned but at least the other tanks already set up there so should make that a little bit easier what i'm probably going to do is just break down any of the equipment especially all the dry stuff anything that's dry at all i'll take that all off and put it in a box um, but yeah all the equipment essentially we're going to take out of this first so we can still leave the tank part to last and you know the fish and all the rest of it so I'm gonna crack on and do that now, as exciting as this is gonna be. I've got a little bit of progress. I've taken away that power storage cabinet where I kind of hide all my power cords and bits and pieces. I've got a lot of the dry stuff down in here. I've, got to take a, I've still got to take some of the wet equipment out. So I've still got the protein skimmer, the return pump. I've already taken the heater out. Um, I've got a little wave maker in the bottom there that I like to keep in the sump as well, just to keep the sump a little bit more clean. Uh, I've got rid of all the, the dosing vessels and stuff like that. So they're all gone. I think this is gonna be a pretty easy breakdown as far as things are concerned. All the T5s and things are off up there. I'll probably end up repurposing those for some reptile enclosures or something down the line. And not sure what I'm gonna do with those primes yet, so might end up selling them, not 100% sure. Yeah, the fish are still happy in there for the moment. And that's kind of like the next section is once I get all this broken down, then I'll be getting all the water and all the corals and all the fun stuff out.
We're in the car now. <laughs> Got an absolute bootload full of all sorts of fish tank stuff. And it's time to get on the road. So as you can see, place is a bit of a mess at the moment. We've got bits and pieces everywhere. I've got to put the chiller on first. That's probably my main point of call is to do that. Got some RO there. Got all sorts of kind of wet gear there, like skimmers and wave makers and things. I've got some more corals in that bucket there. Corals over in here, everywhere. More water. And then right over this way. I got my fish in there with a the battery operated air pump. So why don't we crack on? I'm just gonna chuck the time lapse on and start getting straight to it and try to plumb everything up and get it all started. So it's the next day now, and as you can see, things have cleared up really nicely. I might have to play around with the wave makers a little bit, because you can see that there's a little bit of a sand pile happening in the corners. But the fish are really happy, they've had a mad feed. Um, apart from that, you know, there's a few little nicks and scrapes on them, but that's probably because I had, you know, so many fish in a bucket, so that wouldn't have helped anything at all. I have gone ahead and I've actually put all the other dosing lines and bits and pieces in place, so that's all. All together down here now, I am using the Fauna Marin stuff at the moment and really liking it so far, including all their trace elements and such. I have actually got the ATO chamber down there as well and I'm using um, just one of those smart Aqua ATOs. Yeah, so basically I've just got the one pump that's pumping to the chiller and then straight up into the top of the, the return in the, in the tank itself. And I do have a different skimmer that I might use down the line as well. I've got a a Quantum Nias 120, but I might need to buy a spare part for it just because it's one little bit that's, that's damaged. I'm using a couple of filter cups as well, just with some basic um, filter wool in there. This is just going to keep the water nice and clear, as you can see. It's, uh, it's come up a fair treat. It's looking pretty good at the moment. So apart from that, you would have seen that I would have probably had this little cabinet off the side here. This is basically just where I keep the fish food and all sorts of power boards and stuff. It's a bit of a rat's nest in there, but as you can see, it's got all the grid connect power boards, so I can just control everything over over my phone on an app. And then, you know, to get in to do a bit of food, feeding or whatever, then I can just pull out these trays as needed. So most of the corals transported pretty well. There will be potentially a couple of losses, unfortunately, because I didn't have enough bags on hand. So a couple of corals actually end up butting into each other and. I think there's a little bit of stinging going on. You can see a little bit on that Pacillopora up there. There's a couple of little patches that are looking a little bit sad on there. And um, unfortunately, I have managed to get a bit of a nick on that fish as well. On the orange shoulder tang, he seems to have gotten a little bit of a beat there. And behind him, if he gets out of the way, you might be able to see that there's a little aptasia there that I've just noticed behind the rock. But all in all, most things have transported pretty well. And, and considering the amount of time that I did it in, you know, it was a pretty quick move. It did still take probably about seven or eight hours or thereabouts from start to end. So it was a bit of a big day, um, but you know, we'll bounce back. I'm sure I'll be able to grab a frag here or there to just fill in some gaps if I do lose a coral or two. Well, there you go, guys. Just a bit of a quick video, a little bit of an update. I'm still moving house, even, you know, just about a month on almost. And, you know, this is one of the big tasks that I had to do. I still got to do Loki as well. This is one of the bigger ones. Uh, Loki's going to be next. I'm going to be jumping in and starting him out tomorrow. That's going to be a really big move and I will film it as well because it is something that 
you know, not many people might see breaking down such a big enclosure and putting it into a smaller apartment. So it is one of those things that I'm dreading, but at the same time, I'm looking forward to being done because that's like a big stress off my shoulders. Without any further ado, guys, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out Teespring and Patreon as well. I'll catch you on the next video. Take it easy.